everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and we have spent several wonderful episodes looking at 80s G.I. Joe toys. But you know that feeling when you know you've had too much fun, and eventually it will be time to pay the piper. Those 90s G.I. Joe toys are still waiting and still need to be reviewed. We will eventually have to get back to them, but let's not jump in just yet. Let's just dip a toe into the 90s. This is a quick look at the 1991 G.I. Joe Badger. This vehicle was donated to me by a friend, Steve, so thank you, Steve, for this. The Badger is a light, fast attack vehicle from 1991, and the first thing you notice about it is the color, the neon green, uh, dark blue, and how can you not not notice that it's just right there in your face there's some reuse of parts here in particular the wheels I think were used on other vehicles uh, the Badger itself is not a bad vehicle if you ignore the colors I won't say it's a great vehicle it doesn't measure up to some of the really awesome vehicles we got in the 80s uh, but it has its purpose and it serves its purpose and it's really not too bad uh, but there are some quality issues, and of course the colors, uh, we can't ignore the colors. It has a spring-loaded missile launcher here that can rotate and elevate, um, and it has uh, some missiles, some mounted missiles that can be used with the uh, missile launcher. This missile launcher appears to be broken. I'll have to replace that before reviewing the vehicle. Uh, the missile launcher uh, and the mounted missiles are on the roll cage, and that does open up pops up, it's a little bit of a tight fit on mine, uh, to reveal the uh, the cockpit, uh, the driver's seat, which uh, doesn't have a lot of detail, and of course everything is that same neon color. I will clean this vehicle up more before doing a full review. The Badger appears to be complete except for a flag, the little flag that goes on the antenna. Uh, that is missing, so I'll have to get that too before I review it. Also, it kind of seems like it should have an engine cover here, covering this exposed uh, engine, but I don't believe it came with one, so um, that looks a little bit rough. It lo looks a little unfinished there, uh, and I think an engine cover would have gone well there. Also, because of the way the vehicle is constructed and because of uh, the color scheme, you have um, the hubcaps, basically, um, the mushroom clips where the wheels clip on uh, in different colors, green in the front and blue in the back. That's that's a little distracting, folks. Uh, the colors are, it's hard for me to get past these. It's got the blue bars and headlights here in the front. No other colors to pick out any of the details there. Uh, absolutely no detail on the underside. Uh, it is hollow. It does have a little bit of a, a suspension mechanism here in the back, which is the reason uh, that the clip here is a different color than in front. It has a couple foot pegs on the sides. Now it looks like these foot pegs would not be usable uh, because it doesn't look like there's any room for a foot there. But you can use them, but uh, if you're going to peg a figure onto them, they need to be facing kind of inward rather than to the front, which is how you would normally orient a figure that's pegged onto a G.I. Joe vehicle. Uh, but if you have them facing, you know, basically facing the driver, uh, you can get uh, the figure's foot on the peg and he can ride along. That was just a quick look at the 1991 G.I. Joe Badger. I hope you enjoyed it. This one's not quite ready for a full review yet. I will eventually get it all complete and in good condition. In the meantime, I hope you like this uh, just brief look at it. I know some of you enjoy the neon 90s and we will eventually be getting back to those. And some of you just enjoy seeing my pain as I review those toys. So everybody will have a good time. Thank you for watching. I'll have a full G.I. Joe toy review coming up this weekend. I hope to see you there.